So someone would say, uh, hey, what's a double blessing? A double blessing or a, a, a double anointed or a, a double gifted. Let's say it like this. So you're in the, um, the fast food line to get a sandwich today. Now, of course, we'd rather you go right over here at the end of this service and there's spaghetti and meatballs and all kinds of good stuff. And if you eat, the money and the proceeds go for the young people to go to camp. Right? Am I right about that? So let's give a nice round of applause for all the food. And the food has been, been, been cooked by Dave Dorfline and Heaven Sent. Boy, it is Heaven Sent. It'll be good. Okay, but let's just say, let's just say that we're in the car and we're, the guy in front of us paid for our meal. Now you've heard about that, you know, pay it forward. This time we're going to pay it backwards. We're going to pay, you know what, he's blessed me, so I'm going to bless them. What you don't see, this is Murphy's Law, this is my luck. It's a big van, it's a tinted van, and they got, they got eight child meals, and they got six adult supersized meals, and that's the way it goes. But you know what, you decide to go ahead and pay and bless the one behind you. So what you've done, you've taken a blessing, and you've blessed the people behind you. Follow along? Okay, stay with me on that. I'm glad that really excited them. Okay, 2 Kings 2 verse 9. Let's talk about this double blessing. When they came to the other side, Elijah said to Elisha, this is Elijah talking, tell me what I can do for you before I am taken away. And here's what Elisha said, Please let me inherit a double share of your spirit and become your successor. A double blessing, a double portion, a double anointing. Did it happen? Well, if you look in commentary, if you look in your Bible footnotes or you just study and you study hard and you follow along the miracles of Elijah and then you study along the miracles of Elisha. Or if you're just like me, you just go to a search engine and you find out how many miracles did Elijah, how many miracles did Elisha. Well, he's looking for that double portion. He's looking for that double blessing. Commentary will tell you that Elijah had eight miracles and Elisha had 16. Some commentary will tell you, and there's scripture references, that Elijah had 14 miracles and Elisha had 28. Nonetheless, there was double portion. There was a double blessing that was given to Elisha as a result of the request that he had asked Elijah to give him that double blessing. Now, there is a difference between a spiritual blessing and a physical blessing. A physical blessing may come uh, in a healing. You've been sick, and then God heals you. That's a physical blessing that becomes spiritual. Follow? It may be that you've been blessed financially. You've been blessed with a, a, a promotion. You've been blessed with a, you know, a good a good wife, a good husband, a good family. These are physical blessings. God is the giver of physical blessings and spiritual blessings. James 1 verse 17 says this, whatever is good and perfect is a gift coming down to us from God our Father, who, excuse me, who created all the lights in the heavens. He never changes or casts a shifting shadow. Now, a lot of people don't realize, I'm one of them, that you know, God is the giver of good things. And we got to realize that God gives, God gives us good things. God is not the author of bad things, but he is good in the midst of bad things. God is not the author of bad things, but he is a good God in the midst of bad things. 
If you go up a few verses where James has been, um, this verse that I just read to you in 17, and you'll look in 1 and 12, James talks about temptations and trials and troubles and testing. And in the midst of all that, there's perfect gifts that are given from God in the midst of those troubles and in the midst of those trials. Case in point, I had a funeral on Wednesday, a little baby, the little baby to Cody O'Donnell and Sophia and their little baby, uh, um, uh, Titus, give me to it again, Titus John. He's in heaven. I shared this story about Horatio Spafford. Now, you may not know that name, but Horatio was uh, a businessman in Chicago in the late 1800s. And he had a large business that he owned in Chicago. He's a big real estate agent. And his son unexpectedly died. And so he and his family went through that sorrow. And then in the late 1800s, a fire destroyed his entire business in downtown Chicago. So he planned a trip to get away and he put his wife and four daughters on a ship and sent them to Europe. As fate would have have it, something came up and Horatio Spafford stayed back while his family went to Europe. And a few days later, he was going to catch up with them as he would go to Wales. But the ship sank that his family was, several lost their lives, several survived. His wife survived, but he lost all four of his daughters in that horrific accident. Now, how can that be a blessing? How can that be good? The incident itself is not good. But Horatio himself going across the ocean and the sea billows rolling, he took out pencil and paper and God began to give him the words as he wrote down the sea billows roll. And he didn't concentrate on the sorrow. He didn't concentrate uh, on, on the sadness, but he focused in on the redemptive work of Jesus Christ and the Lord's return. And as he dwelled on what Jesus had done for him, he just simply wrote the words, it is well with my soul. It is well with my soul. A song written 150 years ago that we still sing today because of its power and because of its impact and because of its anointing uh, that it has given us through the years that when we find ourselves in difficult circumstances, we can hold on to a song. We can hold on to a scripture. Listen, everything that is from God is a gift. Everything from God is a gift, undeserved. Everything after salvation is a bonus. And no matter what circumstances or how difficult the way may be, God designs those times for the good, for you in this life and the life to come. People miss this process. They miss it. This is very care. You, listen, listen, you need to hear this part right here. Uh, this process, if you miss this process of what God is trying to do in your life, you run the risk of thinking God has changed. God must be somewhere different. God's aloof. God is not listening to me. Uh, God is, is not sensitive to my needs. It's a good day, four or five days in a row, and then there's a bad day. God, where are you? And you, you find yourself going, going back and forth. Listen, God doesn't change. God never changes. Jesus Christ is the same today, yesterday, and forever. You see the last part of James 1 and verse 17? He doesn't change. He, is, uh, he never changes or casts a shifting shadow. God doesn't change. Listen, God, is, God was perfect and good yesterday. God is perfect and good today. God will be perfect and good tomorrow. And God will be perfect and good throughout eternity.
God is perfect. And the gifts and what you're faced with from God, and remember, he's not the author of bad. Satan's the author of bad. But he is good in the midst of bad. And he's going to take what's bad, he's going to take what's bad, and he's going to turn it into the good for you so that you can be a blessing to someone else. Well, let's read this, 2 Kings 2. I'm going to read 7 through 14. My, what a moment this, what an unbelievable moment this is in the life of Elijah and Elisha, and for those who were watching, and for those who are about to read. Fifty men from the group of prophets went and watched from a distance as Elijah and Elisha stopped beside the Jordan River. Now get that picture. Here's 50 guys, and they're watching Elisha and Elijah as they converse and as they talk. Then Elijah folded his cloak together and struck the water with it. The water divided, and the two of them went across on dry ground, Jordan River. When they came to the other side, Elijah said to Elisha, tell me what can I do for you before I am taken away? Elisha replied, please let me inherit a double share of your spirit and become your successor. And Elijah said, you've asked a difficult thing, Elijah replied. If you see me when I am taken from you, then you will get your requests. But if not, then you won't. As they were walking along, here's where it gets really wild. As they were walking along and talking, suddenly a chariot of fire appeared, drawn by horses of fire. It drove between the two men. Can you get that picture? Here's Elijah and Elisha, and they're walking. And here comes this horse drawn a chariot and it's it it drives between the two men separating and they swoop down they pick up elijah he was carried by a whirlwind into heaven wow elisha saw it and he cried out my father my father i see the chariots and the charioteers of israel and as they disappeared from sight elisha tore his clothes in distress elisha picked up elijah's cloak which had fallen when he was taken up. So here's Elijah. He's going up into the heavens, and he drops his cloak. Remember that. That's very important. And he took, then Elisha returned to the bank of the Jordan River. He struck the water with Elijah's cloak and climbed out. Where is the Lord, the God of Elijah? Then the river divided, and Elisha went across. Wow. Man. Okay. There was frustration at first, in the life of Elisha. In verse 12, he was very frustrated when he asked Elijah, I want a double portion. And then Elisha is taken up and in distress. You know, it was just out of frustration. You know, what he's saying is, hey, did you bless me? Hey, did you pour that anointing on me? Hey, you know, I, I, I can't feel anything yet. I don't know what's going on. And he watches Elisha. Elisha drops that cloak. And then he picks up that cloak, Elisha does, because Elijah's gone into the heavens. Elisha picks up that cloak. But here's a verse I want to give to you. I gave this verse at our Wednesday prayer meeting. It's Psalm 5-3. It's a great verse. Listen to my voice in the morning, the psalmist says. Each morning I bring my request to you and wait expectantly. You know, when we pray, we ought to expect something to happen. We ought to expect God to do something when we're praying. I ought to say, God, we want you to do something. God, we're counting on you. God, you've told us when we ask anything in your son's name, you give it to us. God, you've told us anything according to your will, you give it to us. God, we want that double blessing. God, we want that double portion. God, we want that double anointing. God, we want you to do something in our lives that's going to make a change. God, we want to be focused on you. God, we want, and and so, you know, you can see Elisha, he's saying, God, my father, my father, he says in verse 12, I see the chariot, I see the charioteers. Oh, verse 14. And verse 14, he picks up the cloak and he lays it down on the Jordan River. Now remember, Elijah and Elisha had just laid down that cloak that Elijah had. And they walked across on the dry bed on the Jordan River. Some of you are only thinking, man, I thought Moses was the only one that did that. (laughs) 
You thought he's the only one that opened up the Red Sea, but Joshua walked across the Jordan River. And here it happened twice. This is a double blessing. Elijah and Elisha walk across the Jordan River on dry ground. And after Elijah takes off, man, he just, he throws down that cloak and then he walks back again. Now, one of his first miracles that Elisha performed is here in 2 Kings chapter 2 in verses 19, 20, and in 21. In the subtitle of my Bible, it says here in the New Living Translation, this is Elisha's first miracle. But really, I would consider the, uh, one of the first miracles that when he laid it down and, and then again. So we're already on his third one. So you can see where there can be some differencing of miracles. The thing is, no matter what is said, the miracles were doubled. In verse 19, it says, One day the leaders of the town of Jericho, remember Jericho is a town that's been under the judgment of God. And, uh, you know, the walls came down, you know that story, but here later on, and, and you have Jericho, and Jesus did mighty, many healings there in Jericho, baptized close to Jericho in the Jordan River. He said, we have a problem, my Lord, they told him. The town is located in pleasant surroundings, as you can see, but the water is bad and the land is unproductive. Elisha said, bring me a new bowl with salt in it. So they brought it to him. And then when he went out to the, spring, the, the spring that supplied the town with water and threw the salt in it, and he said, this is what the Lord says, I have purified this water. It will no longer cause death or infertility. Oh. So here's the picture. The water is a picture of an unde unredemptive world. It's a lost world uh, that is, that's bitter. And here Elisha puts the salt, it's like an oxymoron, the spring, the saltan that ran into the Jordan. And Scripture says, till this day, it is clean and living water. They couldn't wash their clothes in the water. They couldn't drink from the water. They couldn't bathe. And there's nothing they could do with this water until Elisha takes the salt in this bowl, which is representative of the Word of God, the salt of the Word, and he throws it into the water. Now that's salt. And Jesus said to one of us, every one of us who follow Christ, that we are the salt of the earth. And the more of the word that you take into you, you become saltier and saltier as you give that salt to other people and become a blessing to other people. Because listen, the word of God is for our barren souls that becomes fruitful. The word of God is a spiritual blessing. The Word of God is a spiritual blessing. Say that with me. The Word of God is a spiritual blessing. Elisha didn't have the Word of God like you and I had the Word of God, have the Word of God. Now, he had a chariot of fire. Wow. It's not every day that we see a chariot of fire blowing through the sky. You know, horses and chariots and charioteers. I mean, that's amazing. They had some amazing things. And Elisha, you know, the life that, uh, that Elijah was leading as a prophet, he wanted that double blessing. Uh, he wanted that to rub off on, on him. And the Word of, the word of God, uh, you know, in our day and age, in this dispensation of grace, brings grace to the sinful person's heart. Listen, let's begin to close this up. And I'll ask Sheila, if she would, and the, and the team to come up front, uh, come to the stage. Um, Elijah is a, let's talk about him just for a little bit. He is a type of Christ, a type of Christ. How's that? Okay. It's a comparison. Let me give you these verses right here. Acts 1, verse 9 through 11. After saying this, he was taken. That's Jesus who's talking. And he was taken up into a cloud. Wow, who's that? The disciples, while they were watching, and others that were standing around listening to Jesus speak. This is the ascension. While they were watching, and they could no longer see him. Verse 10, so they strained to see him rising into the heavens. And there's two, uh, two white-robed men suddenly stood uh, uh, among them. And they said, hey, men of Galilee, why are you standing here and staring into heaven? Jesus has been taken from you into heaven, but someday he will return from heaven in the same way that you saw him go. So it's a picture of Jesus. 
uh, this picture of Elijah who's being caught up. Here's Jesus. He's being, he's being caught up. But Jesus left a promise just like Elijah did. And this is where that cloak comes in. It's John 14, verse 15 through 17. If you love me, Jesus said, then obey my commandments. And I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate. The advocate is the Holy Spirit. Can you say that with me? The Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit, who will, here's the promise of eternal security, he will never leave you. He will never leave you, Hebrews tells us. Never leave you, nor forsake you. You, you are secured into the day of redemption. He is the Holy Spirit who Jesus promised. He said, I won't leave you comfortless when I leave. I won't leave you alone. The Holy Spirit who leads you in all truth. The world cannot receive him because it isn't looking for him and doesn't recognize him, but you know him because he lives with you and now later will be in you. See, the disciples had the Holy Spirit, but the Holy Spirit was all around them. But soon, but soon, the Holy Spirit was going to live inside of them. And that cloak, that cloak in the Greek is a beautiful picture of how the word that it's given, a cloak represents a mantle. Elijah said, I'm leaving my mantle to you. I'm leaving my blessing. I'm leaving this anointing for you, this cloak that you can wrap around. It's like a garment. It's a beautiful symbolic picture of the presence of Christ that's all around you. But in the verb, it becomes inside of you. Just as the Holy Spirit, Acts 2 and verse 4, says this, and everyone present in the upper room was filled with the Holy Spirit and began speaking in other languages as the Holy Spirit gave them this ability. The Holy Spirit now that they experience Jesus and they experience the healings and the, and the power of the Holy Spirit. Now that same power that resurrected Jesus Christ from the grave is the same power that's living inside of them. The power of the Holy Spirit. Now here, and I kind of stretch this one, but I do that often. And this is a spiritualizing a context. And it's Matthew 17, verses 1 through 3. Elijah shows up again. And if you ever wondered, if you had this question, will my loved ones know me in heaven? Well, we know these two guys. Listen to this. Six days later, Jesus took Peter and his two brothers, James and John, and led them up to a high mountain to be alone. As the men watched Jesus' appearance, was transformed, and his face shone like the sun, and his clothes became white as light. Suddenly, Moses and Elijah, there he is, and them dudes have been gone for a couple thousand years, appeared and began talking with Jesus. Wow. Peter, James, and John were talking amongst themselves. Well, we weren't expecting that. We were wanting this, and expecting but we sure weren't expecting that well that's like the son of god now i'm going to give you just a few blessings and then we're going to be finished how to receive blessings how do i receive blessings here's about four or five okay the first one is in revelation 16 and verse 15 look i will come as unexpectedly as a thief blessed are all who are watching for me now this is uh, something that we may not be in a habit in as, as Christians or as followers of Christ, but the closer you are to the salt of the word and to the sensitivity of what's going on around us, we know that we aren't getting older, we're just getting closer to home because Jesus Christ one day is coming back unexp as a thief in the night. He's going to show up when nobody's looking for him and he's going to take us home to be with him. Listen, I believe it with all my heart. I believe it with all my heart. And Revelation 16, 15 tells us as followers of Christ, when we look for his appearing, we pray for his appearing. Did you know it's not a note, but Revelation 1 and verse 3 says, Blessed are those that read and listen and obey the words of this prophecy. What, the book? Yes. But this, when John was writing this, it was the word of eschatology. It was the book of Revelation, the very last book. Jesus said, uh, the uh, Holy Spirit inspired John to write, blessed are those that read, listen, they will be blessed. 
they will be blessed and keep and obey. So right now, everyone in this room under the sound of my voice, or if you're watching online, you have just been blessed because you heard the word of this, uh, of this prophetic book of revelation. And so that's how to get a blessing. Here's another way to be blessed. Just take your agenda and lay it down at the altar. Lay it down at the foot of the cross and just say, Jesus, I've been trying to do this on my own too long. I got to lay it down. I'm tired of running. I'm tired of doing everything on my own. How do you do that? Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things will be added unto you. Just lay your agenda down at the altar and pick up God's agenda. God, what would you have me to do? God, I'm available. I want to put you first in all things. Colossians 1.18 says, may he be preeminent in your life. May he be first place in your life. Give him the first part of your day. Give him the first part of your school. Give him the first part of your family. Give him the first part of your money. Give him the first part of your life and say, Jesus, I'm yours. What can I do? God, what can I do? Another one is just simply this. Just repent. Repent of the things that are in your life that keep you from the Word of God, uh, that keep you from looking up, uh, that keep you from the, uh, the house of God. Just say, Lord, I'm sorry. Forgive me. And he's faithful and just to forgive us of all our sins when we confess with our mouth. And he said, my little children, listen, and he's calling his children. You have an advocate, the Holy Spirit, that is between me and you. That is between me and you. And when you confess those sins, Jesus is faithful in forgiving us. So just repent. You know the most exhilarating thing in the Christian life is when God answers a prayer. I love it when, oh, I love it. I love it when Jesus answers prayer. I love it. You've been praying for something and here's an answer. But then God gives you a peace. You may not get the answer that you were looking for, but he gives you peace because you understand the will of God. You understand what God is doing in your life. There's nothing like it. So I say, pray to receive. Pray to receive. Pray every day and just say, pray. God, I'm praying and I'm asking you. And expectantly, I'm praying for you to do something. And then here's another blessing, two more. Another one is this. Just celebrate the good things that are going on in your life that are good. Just say, God, thank you. Man, I've got a good life. I know right now some things are tough, but God, you're good. I've got a wonderful family, and I've got a wonderful job, and I've got wonderful friends, and I've got a wonderful church, and God, you're doing things in my life. Just like all these precious souls that came through the waters of baptism today. Man, that was so exhilarating. And I like what Andy said. He said, man, let's just keep it up every week. Let's just keep putting people, man, in the baptistry, man. Putting them in that water grave and watching them come up and resurrected man we love it we love it just celebrate what God is doing in your life right now and then the last one is this Um, give mercy and forgiveness to people give mercy and forgiveness do something nice for somebody I think uh, I I told you know I was talking about the drive through our friend Mike Lawson who brought Lisa uh, and then now she's she got baptized this morning Mike and his son were at the fast food restaurant a couple of weeks ago and they saw a police officer behind him and so he said, hey, I want to play, pay for the police officer. And so Mike went over to the, over there by the, uh, in the parking lot and they stopped and they got all their food ready. And, uh, you know, they were parked and the police officer came up behind, beside them and said, hey man, thanks for buying our, 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 my food. And Mike said, man, we just want to let you know we love you. Thanks for what you do. And that was it. And here's what he's done. And I see Dave Nell sitting back here. And Dave Nell, this is a shirt. This is a shirt. Dave Nell can make any kind of, uh, any kind of shirt. Man, he's just, he's an incredible artist. Here's what Mike said, Mike Lawson Jr. He said, Jesus likes nice. Jesus likes nice. Yes, he does. Man, when you do something for somebody, find somebody. So here's my challenge to you this week. Find somebody, man, who's down, who needs an encouraging word, who needs a love from the Father and just say, man, I want to pray for you or, or bless that person with a meal or, or bless that person with, with something. And I tell you what it does. It releases your spirit like no other release. When you do something for somebody else, listen, you're not only blessing yourself, but you are blessing God. 
you're blessing that. That's a triple blessing. <laughs> That's a triple blessing. You're, you're blessing yourself. You're blessing someone, but you're blessing God. And that's, that's what it's all about. Amen? Let's stand together. Lord, thank you for your word and thank you for double blessing. I just pray right now, God, we're getting ready to have a, 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 a healing. We're getting ready to have the prayer of healing, God. And God, your servants. God, we want you to show up. We want you to show up in a way. God, we want to witness a double blessing. God, we want to witness a double portion of your love and your spirit. God, our motive is pure. God, we want to drive ourselves to the throne of grace just to obtain mercy in the time of need. If there is someone here that doesn't know you, I pray that they would pray to receive you this morning. If you don't know Jesus, if you've never invited Christ to come into your life, please, please, just this simple prayer that these young people prayed to receive Jesus, simply pray this, Jesus, forgive me of my sins. Come into my heart and save me. Thank you for saving me. Thank you for dying on the cross for me. Thank you for coming out of that grave. Thank you for loving me enough that you have given me eternal life. In the name of Jesus, I pray. If there was one here who prayed that simple prayer, can I see your hand? I just prayed that prayer. God bless you. God bless you. Anyone else? I prayed that simple prayer. Amen. Anyone else? Lord, God bless you. I see your hand back there. Lord, thank you. Thank you for salvation. Thank you for eternal life. Now, Lord, as we go into this invitation, we give honor and glory to your name. And thank you for all that you've done and all that you're going to do. In Christ, I pray. Amen. As our band leads.